Hello, so today I'm finally going to get around to reviewing this. This is a Chinese FSZ03 Geiger counter slash decimeter. Uh, so I bought this from Hype quite a while ago, it took ages to come, not his fault, just, you know, it got stuck in sort of a sorting office somewhere for ages. And then when it came, I played about with it, thought it was really good, then never got around to doing a video on it for some bizarre reason. So this is a pretty modern Chinese People Liberation Army sort of Geiger counter. I don't know if they've updated to any newer models since this, but you'll see the overall design of it is the green brick similar to the Type 75, just a lot smaller. And it has a lovely red digital display. So we'll turn it on. So to turn it on, you just hold down this button for a while, then it will say on. There we go. Thankfully the text on screen is in English, despite it being sort of communist Chinese. So it does some tests on it, and it passes. When it gets to channel 3 for whatever reason, it seems to get stuck. But what you can then just do is press this uh, a few times, or you might have to hold it down. There you go, end, and then it starts working. So now it's just going to record background radiation, so it will look like that for a little bit. So I will point out, there was a very, very, very loud speaker in this, and unfortunately I broke it, but it was very irritating. Um, there's no off button for the sound on this, so if you like a Geiger counter that makes very loud alarm clock beeping not sounds any time it gets anywhere near a source of radiation, including background, um, there you go. So as you can see, it says it's 0 0.36 at the moment, it might go up, it might go down, and it goes 0 0.23. So the functions on this are basically, there's your Geiger Muller mode, or the scimitar sort of, you know, real-time mode, showing you what radiation it's experiencing at the moment. Then you can press this and it shows you the decimeter since you last cleared it. So you can see there it's 36.8 microsieverts or micrograys. And then if you go back to the decimeter feature, it will start showing you what it's recording. So a cool little feature on this is you'll see it has a microgray an hour and a milligray an hour function. So what that is, is when it's at higher levels of radiation, that little LED just flashes and then it can show you the same sort of, <clears throat> you know, measurement there. Now, I'm trying to remember what this was advertised as going up, because bear in mind, this isn't really a civilian marketed thing, is it? Because it's a military Geiger. And that's why I've got that label on there to hide the serial number, so nobody gets in trouble for potentially smuggling this out, you know, of a military reserve. Um, but how it works is, as you can see, it's pretty good background radiation. Then what it would do is, if I was at much higher levels, it would go to the MGY, not, um, you know, UGY, micro GI. So it goes from micro to milli. Now, apparently, I think this goes up to a couple of sieverts per hour, but obviously I have no way of testing that, or a couple of greys per hour. Remember, greys and sieverts are essentially the same measurement when they're being recorded on a Geiger like this. So anyway, let's do a test of it. So I won't open all the case up and show you all of it, because it's actually quite boring. There's not much in here. There's just one Geiger Muller tube that sits flat across there. Now, the blue tack is where the speaker was, because um, obviously, like I said, the speaker's broken, so I've done that to make the case a bit more, hopefully, airtight. Now... What's good there is, see that little bit of yellow there, little bit of yellow there, the case is actually thinner there. So what that is, is the beta window. So looking at this, you wouldn't think it would detect beta, but the only two places beta radiation can get through the counter, and it goes into a power save mode where it's recording radiation, but the screen isn't on. Um, the only, basically, way uh, you could get beta radi readings through the thing is to put that bit where the Geiger Muller tube is basically laying across that like corner of the device is to put the sample directly up against those and the beta radiation will get through the thinner bit of the case. Now that's quite a good design because it means contaminants can't get inside the Geiger and contaminate it, which is a good design. If you can see there's a rubber o-ring that goes all the way around the top, if you were to open it up to get the mechanisms, you undo those four screws and it pops open, um, and that's the battery compartment. So it's very simply designed from the outside anyway, but you probably want to see it doing something. So here's an old World War II radium compass. Let's put it against the bit where the mirror is, and we'll see if... Yeah, there we go, it's already shooting up. I said it would be beeping, um, you know, in an ear-destroying fashion if um, I hadn't got, you know, the speaker broken. So what we'll do, it will level off pretty quickly, or whatever the radiation reading is. Um, so this is the equivalent, micrograze is the exact equivalent of microceiver, although it's technically the correct way to say it. Um, so there's that. So obviously, if I just put this, say against the case there. The reading's not going to be as high because um, obviously it's just whatever gamma from that distance is getting into the Geiger Muller tube. However, if we want to do a really, really good experiment, let's open up this compass. This is the one where I've not locked the radium mirror in it from the in the safe like I have all the others. So now let's pop that against there like that. 
and what we'll probably see, if I can get it all in frame, is that's going to really shoot up now. There we go. And bear in mind, if this was a totally open tube to beta radiation, the reading would be way, way higher here, but the beta radiation can only find its way through a small little gap. But the point is you can take beta samples with it, potentially. Um, but, you know, let's close that uh, mirror of doom back up. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice design. Other than the speaker you can't turn off, it's pretty much perfect, you know. It's a pretty convenient, light little size. Yeah, it's heavier and bigger than the Terra P, but it's also a hell of a lot more robust. I'm pretty sure it's waterproof to a sort of low level, unlike the Terra P. Um, the main thing I really like about this, now I've obviously contaminated my Terra P and it's been an absolute bitch to clean, is that this is like a pretty much sealed up device. So, you know, you're not going to be able to get contaminants into it easily and then struggle to clean them out because if you've done the case up properly nothing's getting in basically. Um, so yeah it's just a very straightforward obviously Geiger slash decimeter. Um, I know the Chinese are now using some of the little pager style ones that might be replacements for these I really don't know but these are pretty good. The other buttons are just basically alarm thresholds you know resetting the decimeter adjusting the brightness on the screen but you don't really need to play about with those functions as far as I'm aware. Battery life I'm not too sure on because when I've tried it on different batteries, like different brands of double A's or rechargeable double A's, the battery life on this really varies massively. So it could be a couple of days to um, about a year, depending on you know what you've got the screen brightness set to, what brand of batteries you're using in there. Um, and of course, like all Geiger counters and decimeters, the more radiation you expose it to, the less time the batteries last because it puts more strain on the system. But yeah, overall, it's a very, very simple, good design. Um, you know, I really like this. And again, the bright red alarm clock display is amazing on this. It's one of the best Geiger displays I've seen for quickly giving you information and being readable in total darkness. Um, so yeah, there you go, the FS03. This uses one of those standard cheap Chinese Geiger mother tubes, like the glass ones that are in all the Chinese stuff now. I forget the name of them, it might be similar to Zero Free, but they're the ones, for example, that you get in the Kajo style Geigers, the DIY Geiger Muller boards, you can buy them on AliExpress separately. They're actually very good Geiger Muller tubes, they do beta and gamma. Um, it's just the only issue of them seems to be if you expose them to UV light and there's not anything around the tube, UV light causes the reading to go up. Whereas if you um, have them in a case like this, obviously no light's getting in, so it's completely fine. So other than the fact this had a really, really annoying buzzer you couldn't turn off, um, you know, to the stage you can't have this monitoring background radiation in your house because you'd hear it beeping in every single room in the house, it was that loud. It was actually painful to put a sample near it while you were near it. Um, so that might have been why I accidentally, uh, you know, damaged the speaker on this. Um, overall, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, as I said, I'm going to probably keep walking in circles. Sadly, this is going to be one of those items that, as much as I probably want more of these, and I'm sure a lot of people watching think this looks cool, I don't know if I can even tell you where to get them, because as I said, I bought this one through Hype, who now and again can get you sort of Chinese military surplus, but, or surplus, I guess, but, um, you know, it's one of those things where if it turns up for a decent price, I'd say definitely go for it. However, if it's current PLA army stock, it might not be turning up on the surplus market. But yeah, if I said zero freeze, in the box it also came with a little carry strap and a leather case. The leather case was very basic, sadly it was one of those designs where you couldn't actually see the display when, when it was in the case. You think they'd have worked out how to have, you know, never mind but cut the leather just to see the screen. That's not the hardest thing in the world. Um, but overall, yes, this is very good. As I said, it's a bit heavier and bulkier than some of the little pocket Geigers. But the point is, you know, if you have got a pocket, it does go in a pocket absolutely fine. Um, you know, it's just the annoying thing is, I guess, it could have, if you look at, if you open this up, there is a bit of dead space inside, so they potentially have made this a little bit smaller. But I do like the design, you know, it does feel very robust and it's very straightforward, even if you don't speak Chinese, you know. Power it on, one button shows you current dose, dose rate, one shows you accumulative dose. Then the other things are just messing with brightness and all the other stuff like that, but yeah. Overall, Chinese PLA FSZ03, uh, Geiger counter, it's very good for what it is, um, and yeah, I would recommend it, just as I said, unfortunately it might not be the easiest thing in the world to actually come by.